Today I'm talking about Magic the Gathering, in particular drafting strategies for Magic. So I'm going to start off with the, the most popular one, the bread technique. It's bombs, removal, effective, card advantage, and drags. Now because it's perfect, because it's not, it's definitely not, and uh, the, the more you use it, the more you realize uh, that you need to drift from it quite a bit. But I do feel like it's a, it's a very good framework, some good guidelines for newer drafters to use. So I'm going to use it as kind of my basis and then, and then talk about uh, when to use it and when not to use it. I'm also going to talk about uh, the core set uh, for the most part, but I'm going to keep the content pretty general so that you can, you can use it for really any set that you're drafting with. Um, so as, as many of you know, some of the keys to magic, well, especially drafting, to be able to value the cards that are in front of you, and, and that's primarily based on what you've already drafted. Um, and so that's, that's just getting cards that are, are going to work well together. So if you've drafted some very fast, um, aggressive creatures, that you want to pair them with, with more that are similar to it. So you can focus just on that and not try to be like a jack-of-all-trades and have a whole bunch of, of bigger creatures as well that, that will just weigh down your deck. Um, you really need to focus on one thing to do and do it well when you're drafting. Um, you also need to be able to, at the, once you have drafted everything, to be able to put, the, put your cards together in a way that makes sense, um, that has a, a, a good overall strategy, some good combos, um, and, and, and a, just a good balance of creatures and spells and abilities and, and a good mana base as well. So those are some of the keys. Uh, now I'm going to go through the, the bread technique uh, to talk about each type, type of card that you can draft and, and kind of the, the priority that, in which you want to draft them. These are called bombs because when they hit the table, you completely take over the game. So they'd be like Garak or Jace, of course. Uh, also like a, a Nightmare or a Siobhan. Those would also be considered bombs. Uh, there are some borderline bombs, which are like a, a Sarah Angel or, or maybe an Air Servant, um, that could take over the game, but it's not guaranteed. So for, for those borderline bombs, uh, you have to just see what you have, uh, take, just take into account what you've already drafted um, and decide if, if those make the most sense uh, or not. You, they probably do, they probably still do, but then, you know, maybe you're, you're really hurting for removal and you have to go with like a, a, you know, something else, you know, a shock or a pacifism. Um, it's possible to, uh, to take one of those over, over one of these, so um, that's why they're borderline. If you don't get a bomb, the next best thing to show up for you would be removal. So the best ones being Pacifism or Doomblade or Firebrand, Shock. Uh, those are some of the, the better ones. Uh, there are also like a, a Chandra's Outrage, which is good. Uh, you know, four damage is great. It's going to kill most creatures, but um, it costs four mana. So that's a lot. It's pretty expensive. So it's, it's kind of a tier two removal card, but still very good. Removal is still super, super good. Um, and then you have the, the ones like a, a Quake Sickness that requires that you at least have uh, a few swamps in your deck. Um, probably you have to be like a, a two color, a, either a mono black, of course, or, or like a, a red black, you know, one of two colors being black. So you have enough swamps to make it um, effective enough to put in the deck. Um, and then like a Windstorm requires that your opponent has some flying creatures. So those have some restrictions, but all of them are still very effective removal cards and are, are really high up there on the priority order for which ones you want to draft. So then you have borderline removal cards that are a little more temporary, like a Disperse or a Master of Diversion. So those uh, will like boomerang a card back to the opponent's hand, um, which uh, they will probably bring out the following turn, but it does delay them by a turn, it takes up mana, um, it's good, it's just a different type of removal. And then you have like a Master of Diversion who, when attacking, can tap um, a target opponent creature. Um, so that, that will, uh, will be good early game. Um, it can be okay mid game as well. Uh, when you get to the late game though, they, they probably have a couple creatures out and will probably be able to, to, to kill that guy when he attacks. So um, again, these are, these are good removal cards, just different types. It's not direct removal, so it's not quite as good. Depending on who you ask, the E stands for evasive or efficient or effective and really just makes up that, that third priority of cards you'd like to draft behind bombs and removal. Uh, so for the evasive kind of cards, it's, it's, it's like flying or unblockable, of course, uh, or, or like a death touch. Um, so examples would be like a, like a, a phantom warrior for unblockable, uh, charging griffin for flying, or death touch like even uh, like a deadly recluse would be, would be one. Um, and then uh, the efficient or effective cards are, are usually just, just quicker ones, lower casting cost, 
um, that are, are still kind of tough to block anything that would that would really discourage your opponent from blocking it, like a, um, a, a two drop, like a, a, py a young pyromancer or a child of the night would be would be good examples. Um, and then green has a bunch of them that are that are still pretty quick and would fit into this class, like a like a rootwaller or a voracious worm or maybe like a, a giant spider would too. If you can make it happen, these will make up the most of your your army um, and supplement any of the bomb cards that you can get. Next we have card advantage cards, and that basically means you want to draw more cards because you want more cards in your hand, more cards out on the battlefield. The more you have, if you if you can have more than your opponent, you're gonna have a better chance to win. Um, and and along with this goes um, uh, not drafting cards that will give you a card disadvantage. So things like auras or creature enchantments. Um, if you put a creature out there, put an enchantment on it, and then your opponent has removal and, and gets rid of it with one card, uh, they're getting rid of two of your cards with one of theirs, and that gives them the card advantage. Um, so, so that kind of goes hand in hand with this. And then um, also you, uh, what would be included in this category would be uh, mana accelerators, uh, things that would improve your mana base, um, and then also just uh, at, at, at the end, kind of the, the lower level of this, this type of card would be um, just really aggressive creatures. Um, some people use A uh, for aggressive for this for this in the in the bread terminology, and uh, so so that would just be if if you have uh, a bunch of cards out there that don't really fit into one of the the previous categories of cards, um, you know the bombs, the removal, or you know evasive and efficient cards, uh, then you might want to just get an aggressive creature. So maybe like a rumbling bailoff. Lastly, we have the, the dragons or the sideboard cards, and uh, obviously those are just ones that would be very effective against one specific type of deck. So you might get cards that are really good against flyers or those against uh, very aggressive decks. Um, so those are the those are what you you pick if if you if you find yourself with cards uh, in your pack that uh, don't fit into the other categories. You just grab one of those. Next time I'm going to go over some just really quick tips for drafting uh, that will be uh, especially helpful for new players. I think new drafters. Um, so things like, you know, your target target number of lands is 17, but quick decks you can definitely get by with 16, um, and if you have a lot of bigger creatures and not a lot of mana accelerators, you'd want to go for more like 18. Um, but uh, this is one thing where, where just experience will help you uh, tailor this exactly to the type of deck that you drafted. Don't spend too much time hate drafting. Um, it's, it's something you can, you can use if you have nothing better to do, but it's... It's hard to know for sure uh, what your uh, what the players around you are drafting, and uh, you you should just focus on making your deck as good as possible. Also, a lot of newer players overvalue the bigger creatures and undervalue the smaller efficient creatures. Uh, but the smaller efficient creatures are the ones that should make up the most of your deck, except for the big bomb cards and and removal and that kind of thing. Just don't just say I'm gonna go white blue no matter what. Um, you'll if you do that you, yeah, once in a while you'll win, but uh, overall you're you're gonna lose most of the time. So, so that's about it for this video. Um, I do want to reiterate that a drafting technique such as bread or anything else that you read about or hear about or watch in a video like this is just a guideline. And what will take you from being an average drafter to an elite drafter is being able to look at the cards in front of you and um, value them based on the cards that you've already drafted. Uh, because the value of each card is going to change every time you take a new card. So um, that, that I believe is the key, but uh, hopefully the things that uh, I talked about in this video will help you in your next draft. Um, and uh, I guess, yeah, that's it. So thanks for tuning in, and hopefully I will see you next time.